several requests to do a video about the signal path that I use in my studio. Your signal path is the path that your signal takes going from your instrument, in this case electric guitar, all the way to the computer, and you can even go further than that, all the way to the speakers. Um, and normally when you talk about signal path, you talk about, uh, you go in that order. You start from the instrument and go to the speakers. I'm actually going to go backwards. I'm going to start with the speakers and, and come this way. And uh, about halfway through the video, you'll understand why. Um, so generally, I'm using Yamaha um, speakers. Um, they're powered already, so basically you can just send a signal to them uh, from your, your ADD converter, in this case DA converter, which uh, A to D stands for, AD converter stands analog to digital, which this is analog and the computer is digital, so you need to go to a converter. Um, same way when you go from the uh, converter to the speakers, you have to have a digital to analog conversion because speakers are analog. So basically, I'm, from the speakers, I'm going through a uh, uh, Megami cable into a splitter that just allows me to mute the speakers if I want to use headphones. Uh, if I'm going to use a microphone, I don't want the speakers on because of feedback. Um, and from the, from the splitter, I go uh, Megami cables again uh, to, the, to an Apogee Duet 2. And uh, that is my com uh, converter. And what that does is it sends the signal from the computer to the speakers. And so um, the, that is, the converter does both versions of the conversion. It does both the digital to analog and analog to digital. And in this case, when it's coming from the speakers, it's, it's taking that analog signal, uh, or the digital signal and sending it to the speakers. So from the duet, I'm going to the computer, okay? And um, so if I played something, Basically what's happening is the computer's playing it, sending it to the um, duet, and the duet is sending it to the speakers, okay? Um, and so now we're at the point where we're going to bring stuff into the computer. So how are we doing that? Well, again, we use the duet, the same duet. It's just two channels. I'll, that's all I ever need. I never record, I don't record drums here. I'm only recording guitars, sometimes stereo, mostly mono. Um, and so from the duet, I'm going to... Um, what's called it's what's called the industry it's called a lunch box but basically um, it's a box that's powered that you can put what's called 500 series components in and 500 series just refers to the fact that it fits into this box basically it's it's a certain size um, I'm sure there's a more technical term for that my electric guitar is going into um, a, uh, a an API 512 C so I have one of those here um, that my electric guitar is going into, and then that goes into the duet, and then that goes to the computer, okay? So <laughs> I'm trying to go backwards, but it's difficult because it really, the signal path really does go that way. But I'm, again, I want to make a point here in a second. Um, and then from the uh, API, I'm going to my guitar. But before I get to my guitar, um, I'm going through maybe a pedal or two. Um, I rarely go through a pedal board. I like to just only plug in the pedals I'm going to use. So sometimes it may be um, a distortion box, a lot of times a compressor. I'm always going through a volume pedal so I can, I can mute my guitar with just a, with my foot. Um, but basically right now I'm not, go I'm going into, lo into Logic is the software I'm using. I'm going to do another video talking about Logic and amp plugins. Uh, this is Amplitude. I don't know if you can hear it, or how good it sounds. Uh, but it sounds great right here. And I've got two speakers, so it's nice and stereo. I've got some deep uh, delays and some reverb. And so it's something like right now, I've also got a wah-wah pedal down there. Sometimes I like to have a wah handy. So, but, but my signal path from my guitar to the API will be different uh, depending on what I'm recording. So if I'm doing something that's very hard rock or heavy metal type, I might actually go through another distortion box or something. If I'm doing something funky, then the, then the wah pedal is going to be hooked up. If I'm doing something kind of experimental, I've got like an analog delay that I can mess around with, things like that. So if I, I, can, I can do all sorts of stuff. But, um, so that basically takes it. And then I'm using Mogami cable also to get to, to uh, the API from the guitar. All the cables are pretty much, uh, the main cables are Mogami. Um, and then the guitar in this case is, is a, a GNL Legacy Special. Late 90s, 96, 97. 
Um, okay, but that's the electric path. The, sig the signal path for acoustic is going to be a little different. Uh, the, the front half of that's the same. So getting to the from the speakers to, uh, to the computer um, is the same. The computer goes to Apogee again, and uh, the Apogee goes to the lunchbox. And this time for the acoustic, I have a let's see a BAE 73 MPL, which is basically uh, kind of a knockoff of a Neve 1073 preamp, um, and that's what, kind of one of the classic preamps. I tend to like preamps that are very simple. I don't want compression or EQ or anything like that. I want to try to get a good sound with the instrument and the mic. Um, and so for me, that's, that's uh, more critical. And chances are, if I have a compressor, you can't uncompress something. Um, if I, I, you know, chances are I'm going to mess it up. And so I'd rather send it because generally what I'm doing is I'm sending my files to engineers who are much better at it than I am. So I don't want to, I, I want to send them as pure of a, of a signal as I can send them. Okay. So from the, um, fr from the 1073, I'm going to a microphone. Again, I'm using a Mogami cable there. And um, the microphone I'm using now is a Gefell. And uh, dang it, I should know the model number. But I can show it to you here. I'll, I'll put it. I'll put it in the description there. Um, but basically, it's a Gefell, and um, it's uh, a, a German mic, and I just really, really like it. And what happens is, I'll do like I'll go somewhere and do a session, and I'll listen back to the track, and I'll go, man, the guitar sound sounds great. And I was like, what is it? And it's you know the. And then what I'll do is I'll, you know, they'll tell me what mic it is and what preamp it is. And generally what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of try to replicate that, that uh, uh, signal chain in my studio because I like it. So I've probably changed my signal path for acoustic instruments three times now. I started out with a Model 1, was uh, from a, an engineer that I worked with. I really liked the sound he got, so I got one of those mics. And then I ended up with an AKG uh, 451, I think. And then now I'm using the Gefell. So... Um, and I still have the other mic so that I can sometimes use two mics or, or sometimes I want to have a different sound and I go with a different mic. And that will definitely affect, the type of mic you use will definitely affect um, the sound you're going to get out of your acoustic guitar. Now, normally when you do a, a, a video or you talk about signal path or your signal chain, um, that's where you start is the microphone. So normally I would say, I use a Gefell mic, I go to Mogami Cables, I go to a 1073, then I go to an APG or an Apogee uh, Duet, and I go to the computer, and I back to the Duet and to the speakers. That's normal. Okay, but I'm, I'm showing you the signal path backwards because it's not over at this point. In fact, in my opinion, it's only just begun. When you get to the microphone, there's other things to take in consideration. The path could be also the distance. There are times where I want a mic really close, especially if I'm finger picking and I want to get that sound of my nails and my, and my fingerprints even on the, in the microphone. Um, if I'm strumming, I'm maybe going to back up a little bit, but that you could be 12 inches away, you could be four inches away, it's going to radically impact, impact the sound that you're going to capture. Uh, the same thing is where you mic, if you mic the body, it's going to be very dark. If you mark right over the sound hole, it's going to be boomy. And if you mic the neck, it's going to be very bright. So you kind of want to find that sweet spot. Um, and so I, a lot of times with acoustic, I'm, I like to record a little further away. Um, and that way I don't have to be, have too, of a, too much of a radical sound. It's not going to be too bright or too boomy. It's going to kind of sound like the guitar plus the room. And that's the other part of the signal path, the sound of your room. If you've got a very bright room, and this room's pretty bright, I'm sure you can hear some of that reverb and, and uh, the sound of the walls right now on this video. Um, and that's why in studios, oftentimes they'll pad the crud out of it. That's why you see, I don't know if you, in this, <laughs> I don't know if they're really in this frame right here, but normally when you're watching my uh, live stream or you're watching my videos, you'll see um, I've got baffles on the wall that help cut back on reflections. I mean, I even have, uh, flannel shirts hanging on the door behind this camera to kind of cut back on reflections. Um, so you could do little things like that. Um, I've even got right now, you can't see it, but I brought in a couple cushions from a sofa to put right there in the corner of the room to cut back on the reverb and, and uh, make the room a little bit more quiet. Um, it also cuts back on the amount of noise you get from outside the room. Um, now also the important thing is the pick you use. You know how I like, I mean I've got 
a bunch of different kinds of picks here, and all every pick makes a different sound. You won't really be able to hear it, but this is a very thick pick. I even have a felt pick. I could do a felt pick. So that's totally different sound, you know, then I've got maybe uh, a, a weekend bluegrass pick. And that one definitely sounds very good. So, you know, the pick will make a difference. The strings will make a difference. A lot of times I like older strings um, because I, I want them to sound more vintagey almost in some ways. The, the strings will make a difference. I also, you know, uh, I use elixirs, you know that. That's largely because my hand sweat just corrodes them. So it does take a while for elixirs to sound old. Uh, but they definitely aren't as bright out of the box as a brand new set of strings. And sometimes a, a brand new set of strings um, can be a little on the, on the brittle side. Um, and I find that oftentimes too, with my hand sweat, what was happening was they would corrode so fast that you could hear the difference at the beginning of the session to the end of the session. I'm, I'm not kidding. Uh, so that's why I like elixirs for that reason, because I, I think they sound pretty even for, for days, weeks, and months sometimes. Okay, um, and then of course the guitar is going to make a difference. Okay, the guitar is going to make a difference. Um, and uh, so I, you know, if I played um, my Larrabee High Strung or my Martin, uh, this Martin or a Gibson or a classical guitar, or they're all going to sound different. If I played an Ibanez, a really cheap kind of uh, acoustic guitar um, with really light gauge strings, it's going to sound completely different than a Martin with heavy strings. So that's all part of your signal path because you're creating a signal. Um, your fingers make a big difference. Man, right now my nails are golden. <laughs> I'm really loving my nails right now. Uh, and I'm trying to keep them pretty short because I'm really afraid I'm going to break one. And it's the stupidest thing. I'll, I'll close the trunk on my car or something and a nail will flip back and break off. And I'm like, dang it. You know, I've had it happen the stupidest ways. So right now I'm kind of keeping my nails as low as I can, I can have them and still be useful so that I don't break them because I'm really digging the sound of it. Um, but also there's a thing called bone tone. And like Steve Ray Vaughan, you know, that's the sound of their finger, their bone on the string and on the fret. Uh, all of that plays into your sound. And that sound is, is part of the signal that's heading down the path, so to speak. Um, and then the lastly, the most important part of the signal is the neurons in your brain, the idea you have. Because if you have a great idea, you don't, don't necessarily have to have the world's greatest signal path. Uh, but if you have a horrible idea, if it's a bad guitar part, if it's a bad song idea, if it's a bad hook or a bad groove idea, uh, if it's played badly, no signal path, I don't care how good the signal path is, it's not going to fix it. <laughs> so I, it's, it's to me where the whole process starts is right here between the ears. And if I have a good idea, then it will surely translate to the microphone, you know, through the strings and through the pick and the fingers and through the air between the microphone and to the microphone and through the Megami cable across the room over to the to the lunchbox and into the 1073 and then from the 1073 into the Apogee Duet converter and then from that into the computer into Logic and then from Logic back into the Duet and then back into the speakers and you get a good sounding track. Um, and that to me is my signal path. I was asked to, to share it and that's basically how I envision it. And um, so uh, I would consider, I would, I would uh, uh, you don't have to copy my signal path to get a good sound at all. There's been great records made with lesser signal paths and a lot of records made with much better signal paths. So, um, but it is fun and it is a little bit addicting to kind of get into the different components and get nerdy about it. And uh, so I'm going to include uh, some links down below. Um, also, I will include um, uh, pictures and stuff like that so you can see close-ups of everything I'm talking about, okay? So, of course, now that you're at this point of the video, you know I already did that. <laughs> so why am I telling you? So I should probably cut this part of the video out, right? Yeah, I'm not going to do that. You know I'm not going to do that. <laughs> All right, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much. Um, I'm still, right now, I'm doing, uh, keep tabs on my uh, live stream. If you turn on the um, notifications, you'll get a notification if I go live, because I've still been doing about three lessons live a week. 
pretty much focused on, on a subject, but I get sidetracked very easily. And so you can come with your questions if you want to, and I can uh, try to answer them if I can. I, I generally don't know much about anything. <laughs> you can fill a library with stuff I don't know. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching.